I can tell you from experience, I wouldn't trade growing up in one of these rural towns for anything. I grew up in Monterey, Tennessee, on a hog, tobacco, and cattle farm. You can actually see in the photo there, that's our farm, right down our gravel road. Um, and that's actually my daughter there to the right on our farm. It's our number one place to go and relax on the weekends. And that right there, that's Monterey, downtown Monterey. When I grew up there, it was a town of 1,500, and we're right on the cusp of reaching 3,000 at this time. <clears throat> at an early age, I learned the timeless dedication of hard work, a passion, a passion and a calling to outlast a draw away from any I'm sorry, I'm, I get so emotional watching that Scott County video. It, it, it tears me up every time. But at an early age, I learned the timeless lessons of dedication and hard work, a passion and a calling that, only, that would only outlast any draw away from our family farm. I am passing this on to my daughter, Lily Kate. Long summers, sunburns, sore muscles, dirty fingernails, with that Tennessee soil underneath them were always signs of, of a long day's work on the farm. A long day's work that was actually necessary to make a living on the land. And it's a land that many of you in this room, you all call home as well. That's rural Tennessee. I saw the looks of determination on the faces of my grandparents and my parents, who too, they called the cattle on those cold winter days they chopped tobacco on those really hot summer mornings, but that's just the way it was. That is Tennessee. That's rural Tennessee. I stand before you today knowing the values that come before me <clears throat> living in rural Tennessee and the unique challenges and opportunities that we have. I also stand with you with a room full of partners and an awesome team that is dedicated to reviving the effort and creating an innovative solution to greater outcomes across all of our rural Tennessee. As you can see, we're not alone in this. We have a governor that is dedicated by his words right there. He says that all of rural Tennessee, our rural communities, are the heart of our state. The photo you saw earlier of Commissioner Boyd and Mr. Powell remind me of how my role in this effort began. Um, if you've been to Powell's, you know that you actually have to eat outside, or at least the ones we went to. Uh, we went in February. It was the best burger I've ever had, but it was really, really cold outside. Um, <clears throat> but I'll never forget it. Um, Commissioner Boyd approached me and asked me if I would be interested in helping to lead the effort to revive rural Tennessee. And I'm honored to be given this opportunity and this responsibility but the first thing I knew is that I could not do this alone. The journey had to begin with understanding what the challenges actually are from you all, from your voices, the inherent needs of our communities, <clears throat> the rural communities that we serve. I embarked on a tour across the state, meeting with many of you, um, and just, some, just talking about the stories that you all have, and very touching stories, too. I saw grown men in a room with tears dripping down their face because they knew that they, there were no jobs for their kids to come home to or for their ki grandkids had to move to Memphis or Nashville and couldn't be raised there close to them because there were no jobs. And I won't point anybody out for that. But, um, so through that, throughout this tour, we wanted to demonstrate that we have a desire to bring the resources and be able to partner with you all in these needs and to create policies and programs to address these needs for rural Tennessee. I wanted to learn how our existing programs were actually helping you or if they were actually helping you. And I wanted to work with you all to identify new programs to address these appropriately. You afforded me and the department a great deal of invaluable in insight driven by these categories you see here on the board. Those being site development, community development, and this is no surprise to many of you. These are typically the areas that we all are working in all the time. But it was a good insight on where we needed to strategically hone in on where our resources are and our technical assistance. 
In taking a holistic approach, Governor Haslam appointed a rural task force in August, a task force that brings together local, state, and federal partners. And I'll tell you, friends, the challenges in rural Tennessee are great, but the opportunity and the resources that this group of people brings to the table is even greater. Ultimately, the task force will work with all of you in this room, all of our stakeholders, to identify and design strategic initiatives that will address the key issues impacting our rural communities. And ultimately, the long-term objectives that Commissioner Boyd talked about earlier, those are our goals. That is what we want to do. The map that um, Commissioner Boyd talked about earlier as well, it's more than just a map. It's more than just a map of our distinct and vibrant regions. It tells a story of generational disadvantages that require thoughtful attention and resources. These are not just any resources. These are, re these are resources that you all said during the listening tour, every time we've been in the communities, these are needs. This reflects a tier system that designates variances in economic prosperity. It shows 21 of our 95 counties in federal, by federal definition as distressed. We see this as unacceptable and a call to action. The shades and lines represent counties with double digit unemployment rates, high poverty, and strained personal incomes. But what we see, we see potential greater than ever because of everyone sitting in this room. All statistics set aside, again, everyone sitting in this room, you all witnessed this. You see this in your communities. You see what living in rural Tennessee means and how real lives are being affected every day by the lack of competitive opportunities in your, in your counties, in your communities. We see the demand for relentless commitment to expect better and produce greater outcomes. Where kids can grow up, like we talked about earlier, can grow up in the communities where their grandparents and their parents were raised. Where we can provide better education attainment where we can have more opportunities for high quality jobs close to home. So like me, my dad for the last 34 years has driven round trip 180 miles every single day from our farm to go to Nissan to work. 34 years and he still does it. But this, this is the reason we wanna do this. We want to have parents who can spend time going to their kids' basketball games or going to those family events instead of spending time on lengthy commutes. <clears throat> You know, together, as Team Tennessee, we keep saying this over and over, I'm pretty sure everyone in here should be reciting Team Tennessee before you leave, but we can do this together. So throughout the listening tour and over the past six or seven months, we have sat down and worked with regional, state, federal, state um, partners to come up, come up with um, our existing programs and new initiatives that you all will see outlined here today. And on this board, you'll see those, ed those areas broken out by what we heard the most of your needs in. Site development, community development, entrepreneurship, and education and workforce development. Not every tool transcends the challenges of rural communities. For, for those wanting to target specific industrial recruitment, the RAP preparation can be a game changer. And Commissioner Boyd talked earlier about our Select Tennessee program, so I won't go into too much depth. Um, but again, we have 39 of those certified sites. We've already started to see the return on investment with those. We've had seven projects land there, nearly a billion dollars in capital investment, and a, a little over 3,400 jobs. This is incredible. This is activity that we want to continue to see. And with our suite of Select Tennessee programs, communities can do that. And we invite you all to continue to go toward that because we plan to add at least 10 sites, certified sites, to our program each year. So another program that we have that can assist communities in getting to this, to this goal is our property evaluation program, AKA PEP for everyone in the room who's heard about, heard about the program. <clears throat> we, we have this program to be able to Improve, improve our industrial sites and buildings in Tennessee by evaluating potential and 
investments, as well as advising our communities on where those specific investments are and what should be targeted and, and what the issues are to be able to, to actually address and move an industrial um, company in. We, put, we piloted this in five communities, in five counties. You can see it here at our map. And we have six current counties right now. And we will, we are committed to offering this to 12 counties every single year. So most of you in this room know that site selection is actually site elimination. Through the process of site selectors who are looking for reasons to reject a site. Sometimes there are barriers and very extensive barriers, especially for our rural communities. We hear site selectors all the time say, if only there was water over here, if only there was light grading. For a rural community, sometimes that's hard to just say, oh, well, let's come in and lightly grade 40 acres over here. But you know what? We, we at ECD, we want to help eliminate those if onlys. So how are we gonna do this? We are ready to announce an incredibly new deliverable for the Select Tennessee suite of programs. And I hope everyone in the room is ready for this. We want to increase the number of project placements. And we want to partner with communities to complete the finishing touches so that we can have more industrial site announcements and that we can have more of those gold shovels tossing that ceremonial dirt. <clears throat> I get a drum roll. <laughs> The state of Tennessee is excited to announce that we are investing $6 million in new site development grants across the state. <clears throat> we have seen the success of our partners at TVA with their TVA Invest Prep program, and many of you in this room have been recipients of those TVA Invest Prep grants, and you've seen, you've seen how top-notch this program is. And we too, we want, we want TVA, and TVA has um, committed to serving as a special advisor to our new grant program, and um, will also help us in determining those turnkey opportunities as we go through with investments. So and to learn more about the Select Tennessee suite of programs, Leanne Cox, our site development director, will have a session later this afternoon. We understand sites, industrial sites, is not enough, and not every community is meant to have site recruitment or industrial recruitment. We must all have strong, thri strong thriving communities, and through our three-star program, Commissioner Boyd mentioned earlier, that's exactly what we do. Decision makers are constantly asking us which communities are the safest, which have the, the most um, qualified workforce the high education, that have a safe community. This is nothing new, though. When then-Governor Lamar Alexander, more than 35 years ago, announced the three-star program, it was an effort to bring stakeholders at the local, county, and regional level together to create a framework for economic growth. Today, our three-star program is still galvanizing more than 90 communities and their municipalities to work together within this framework. And also, with our three-star advisory council, and we have a couple of advisory council members here today, we have such a strong network. It's about aligning those departments who represent those different three-star areas. Since 2011, we've awarded Tier 2 and Tier 3 counties an annual three-star grant. Who have, these are counties who have met the evaluation requirements and have met the rigorous requirements that are set forward, things like creating an audit committee, having um, a financial audit review. These things sometimes sound a little bit more simple than I know some of you in here. Um, I make a joke often, two years ago when we started the new requirements, Across our state, we only had 28 counties who had audit committees. And today, we have 94 of our 95 who have audit committees. Um, I sometimes say I went back to my old Girl Scout cook cookie selling days and started selling audit committees like Girl Scout cookies. But we did make it happen. 94 of our 95 counties 
have audit committees. <laughs> Thank you. So with our three-star grants, we have more than $2 million in seed money that was granted to develop and implement programs focused on the, these five key areas. We've seen excellent three-star success with these projects and these programs. I know last year we had a great panel full of things like Dyer County Gearhead, the Gibson County No Excuses Tour, and our Wayne County Digital Hub. These are programs like these. These are ones that we want to keep on. We want them to keep on trucking. We want to enhance those programs. And because of this, we want to award an additional 10 counties with an additional 25000 on top of their 10000 to be able to enhance that project throughout their county. These are, these are 10 counties who have continually met the requirements and have increased their education rate, their health rankings, and their overall scorecards. So we can be the best state with the best sites and the best communities, but if we do not have a workforce, we have nothing. In Tennessee, we've created, a, created an innovative work, workforce partnership and a game-changing education reform for skills in high demand in today's job market. To make the best products, we need the best people. With programs like Drive to 55, Tennessee Promise, Tennessee Reconnect, LEAP, and Workforce 360, each and every single of these pro each and every single one of these programs can be great equalizers for our rural communities. And we have to continue to talk about this in our rural communities and talk about the message and talk about the importance of having those mentors sign up for our, for our kids. So with workforce comes being able to connect to the internet and have broadband, kids being able to do their homework from home, people who want to live in rural Tennessee and want to be able to work from their farm or work from that beautiful mountain up there in the Appalachian Mountains. But access to high-speed internet is no longer a luxury. It is a necessity for our Tennessee families. Not only for our families, but our businesses and our consumers. High-speed broadband enables Tennessee to use the internet in new ways. To expand the health services and education and the productivity of their business. As we prepare our workforce, we must keep in mind that in order to drive our socioeconomic, we have to be able to have a clear picture of where our broadband is in the state, its availability and the penetration and the utilization. In order to do this, we are bringing in an outside expert to help us in this effort. We need every single one of you in this room to partner with us and to participate in this data collection to help us understand where we are now and where we need to be. However, this project is not just about data collection. It's about planning for our state's future in an economy that is increasingly developed and dependent upon efficient participation in the digital market and digital age. We will be sending out an assessment to all businesses and residents across the state. There's two ways that everyone in this room can help us. Number one, Fill out the assessment. If you get it, don't think it's spam. Take it. It's about 20 minutes. It'll be the best 20 minutes you've spent. The second way you can help us is encourage others to take this assessment. And be on the lookout for more updates from ECD about our broadband efforts. So we've covered site development. We've co covered community development, um, broadband. But we can't forget about one of the largest industries in our state, an industry that produces $17.7 billion for our local economy. In August, the Department of Tourist Development Commissioner Kevin Friblett and Commissioner, or Governor Haslam announced in the 2014 Economic Impact Study. The $1.5 billion in state and local tax revenue and nearly 153,000 jobs in tourism help improve the quality of life for our Tennesseans. And Tennessee is beyond blessed with those natural amenities, from the farms to lakes to the mountains and forests. People from all over the world are drawn to the natural um, rural outdoors that we have here in Tennessee. 
those are those are areas that can be more developed and enhanced as part of an overall economic development strategy for some of our rural counties. So we know tourism creates jobs. We know it creates income. And for more and for most of the rural communities, it's where a majority of the tax revenue comes from. We see tourism as a key partner in all of our economic development strategies, and it's where, um, sorry, it's, it's, it's a need in our rural communities. And you all talked about this continuously. Every single one of our, we had 21, 21 of those listening sessions. And every single one of them, tourism, was a major discussion point and also an area of need. So we're committing an additional $1 million in tourism-based economic enhancement projects across the state. <clears throat> These are dollars to help enhance the natural amenities and tourist destinations in your communities. A percentage of the program dollars will be used to co-op with Commissioner Triplett's um, tourism marketing program for um, our, our rural communities as well. So we all know that rural development is ever before linked to entrepreneurship. Commissioner Boyd talked about our network with Launch Tennessee as a huge partner in our, our entrepreneurship, um, our entrepreneurial efforts. And ECD and Launch Tennessee are excited to announce a new set or a new channel of organizations that will be, uh, be able to host entrepreneurial programs within their communities. We're expanding the successful programs you see Provided that provide education and assistance to our communities that create a stronger entrepreneurial ecosystem. Programs like the Code Academy, 100 Girls of Code, Co-Starters, and the Code Catalyst. Applications to host these programs will be available, or actually they're open now, um, and we'll be announcing them later this year, but you can learn more about these programs at the Launch Tennessee session. So we talked about agriculture, and everyone knows when you look at our state sale, and for me, growing up on a farm, it's the first thing I see, but agriculture is real big across our state sale. It is our largest industry, and we can't forget that. And ag innovation, it's, I mean, it is, it is becoming a major economic development driver for our country. Globally, it's over $4 billion that are invested in venture capital funds just for 2015 thus far. Tennessee is well positioned to be a catalyst for precision agriculture, robotics, and the next generation of supply chain. Agriculture and forestry is a $66 billion industry accounting for more than 10% of Tennessee's state or Tennessee's um, economy. The Ag Launch program will facilitate through new programs such as Farmers Networks, Experiment Stations, and Integration Networks to offer the entrepreneurial pipeline for ag and farmers. Ag Launch is a key component for the Innova Ag Innovation Fund through USDA and the Farm Credit Bank. This fund will invest up to $25 million in early stage capital in our rural communities right here in the state of Tennessee. ECD and Launch Tennessee will join our partners at the Department of Agriculture, USDA Rural Development, and the Delta Regional Authority and invest an additional $150,000 in Ag Launch over the next two years. So with all this, we can't forget our main street. This is where our, our roots, these are the things that pull on the heartstrings for me. It's in another area that you'll probably have to just shut me up after I keep talking, but main streets are traditionally the center of social, cultural, and economic activity for all of our rural communities. These are the, these are the communities, these are the big stage, the core, the core of our community. The main streets tell us who we are and how the past has shaped us. We don't go to the suburbs or the mall to learn about our past or our culture or discover the identity of our community. Our main streets are the places of shared memories where the entire community still comes to live, work, and play. 
Over the past 34 years, the Main Street Movement has transformed the way communities think about revitalization and preservation in historic downtowns. After welcoming the cities of Bolivar, McKenzie, and Sevierville, we now have a record number of Tennessee accredited Main Streets in Tennessee. Awesome. And we expect Pulaski and Athens to join us later in the year as number 32 and 33. So if you see these communities, that congratulate them on hard work. Um, it does pay off. In addition to our Tennessee Main Streets, we have the Tennessee Downtowns Program. Since 2010, 34 of our communities have participated in this 24-month educational program that teaches the, um, walks the communities, coaches them through the steps to downtown revitalization in areas of design, organization, economic restructuring. But in addition to just that coaching that they get, since the program started, ECD has invested more than $510,000 just in innovation projects in each of these communities, visible projects that your, the people living in those communities drive by and see every day. These are projects that were also leveraged with more than $3 million of public-private investments. And again, we're excited that we will be able to accept another round of our Tennessee downtowns. This will be in January. It will be our fifth round, and we're taking another six communi communities into this. In 2014, the economic impact from um, 28 of our Tennessee Main Street communities created more than 1,500 new jobs and generated more than $95 million in public-private partnership. As you can see, the re reinvestment statistics here, our downtowns are such an important part of our state's economy, our identity, and our culture. Flourishing downtowns provide a sense of pride for our community and promote entre entrepreneurship, with, which ultimately, that creates jobs. To continue promoting these investments you see on this board, we developed the CDBG facade enhancement grants in 2013. By the end of this month, we will select an additional five communities to receive that $100,000 CDBG enhancement grant. Since it started, we've awarded 25 communities with these grants. So in rural areas, small business drives the economy. Much like new life can be, needs to be incubated, the same holds true for our small businesses. Starting a business on the right foot is essential for the ultimate success of that business. Because of this, we are adding an exciting new initiative for developing entrepreneurs in our downtowns. In January, our accredited Main Street communities will be invited to apply for six $50,000 grants to develop a program that supports small business startups and makes our downtowns the best place for entrepreneurs to grow and prosper. So we understand the value of funding from our federal partners at HUD, um, USDA Rural Development, ARC, and DRA. The monies go toward basic infrastructure needs, as well as initiatives that assist in economic development efforts. And we plan to strategically use these funds to co-invest opportunities that support all of our rural development initiatives. And we've already been doing that internally to restructure parts of those areas by moving our community development federal programs within rural development. And we are also naming Brooksy Carlton as our Deputy Assistant Commissioner for Rural Development. We're excited to, we're excited to have Brooksy in this position because if anyone knows these programs better, it's Brooksy Carlton and our communities. So as you see from all the programs up on the board, all of the red in our new areas, our initiatives, we are committed to strategically positioning our existing portfolio of resources in order to make a difference in rural communities. And now with nearly $8 million in added funding capacity, we have even greater opportunity to create more assets that are enhancing and redefining rural Tennessee's promise. We are excited and hopeful that all communities wake up tomorrow with a renewed optimism. We want each and every one of you to be driven to roll up your sleeves and join us in this effort to identify ways of plugging into these programs. 
we have no doubt that the results that we strive for will become the new rural reality, a reality that speaks of success, filled with liveliness, that holds the distinction of being a destination of choice. This all started with a choice, a choice to make rural development and rural Tennessee a focus, and that's exactly what we are here to do today. You, as leaders in this room, you all have a choice. Please join us in our mission to make Tennessee the number one state in the southeast for high quality jobs. And together, as Team Tennessee, we can bring success to our state. Thank you all so much for letting me have the opportunity to serve in this role.